My name is uh, Shreyan Smeta, and uh, I'm one of the co-founders and CTO at uh, Stealth Security. Uh, we are in the bot detection and mitigation space, and my talk is about uh, breaking bots, uh, the good, the bad, and the unwanted bots that we see on our websites. Uh, so we all, probably all know bots are automation, but uh, not all automation is bad. And I just want to walk through some of the examples of uh, different kinds of automation that we see on our side and how do we deal with it. So let's start with the good automation first and good bots. And the most obvious ones are the crawlers that, that hit your site, the, the Yahoo, the, the Bing, the Googles of the world. And this is obviously you want, you, most of the time you do want them on their side unless uh, they're doing something nasty. Uh, the other kinds are these application monitors that you sign up for, things like uh, Dynatrace that are doing your uh, health monitoring, uh, performance monitoring, availability, all those kinds. Even security monitoring, they're scanning your sign. So you do want, you have signed up for it, you do want them on your side. The third kinds are, are the aggregators, and it, it's very vertical market specific. Um, there are things like uh, in the financial segment, there are mints and yodlies of the world that are uh, scraping the, the, the information on your customer's behalf. You don't want to block them, uh, but you do want visibility on those sites. Um, in the retail segment, there's companies like uh, Award Wallet and the likes. They're aggregating traffic for uh, things like reward points or any other things that you could be seeing uh, automation from. And the last kind is these custom applications that either you might have written or your customers might have written. Uh, and examples of these are, let's say that you have a test tool that you have, you have uh, written up to automate on your site for how, it, how your site is rendering for different mobile apps or, or uh, web applications and so on. Or your customers might have written some sort of automation to do transactions on your behalf. Uh, it could be, uh, on, on their behalf. It could be like monitoring the status of something behind your site or doing actual. We've seen customers, uh, one of our customers, they, they are a trading platform. There's some, some people doing actual transactions in an automated fashion. Again, le legitimate bots. So these are all the, the good bots uh, that you will probably see on your site as well. The next one is the bad, the bad kinds. And there are various different examples of these. Uh, the, the most common one that we run into are the account, uh, account takeover attempts using, using bots. And uh, the, the biggest one is account verification activity, as we call it. What, what these guys, bad guys do is they get, um, get a, uh, access to, like, let's say, LinkedIn or Yahoo breach credential dumps. And uh, even though LinkedIn might have reset their passwords, people tend to reuse those passwords on other sites, the same username passwords. So what these guys do is get, get hold of these credentials, try it out on your site. Like, even out of the 500 million, if 5,000 or 10,000 of them actually work on your site, these are verified credentials for your site, right? So these kinds of activities, they, they can program it, code it, and, and just try it on, on various different sites. And this is what we call as account takeover, account verification activity. Then the next one is um, fake account creation. Again, it is vertical specific, but the idea here is using bots, these guys create hundreds and thousands, sometimes millions of accounts. And the idea being, if you're, let's say, giving away anything free on your site, it could be in terms of storage, it could be compute, or any, it's, uh, they can sign up for it and get access to their free storage and then create new accounts and so on and so forth, right? We've also seen this kind of activity in the financial space for money laundering purposes. People have created hundreds and thousands of accounts, sometimes millions, and, and just do my smaller transactions ultimately funnel out the money out of the country. 
the PII and PHI thefts, uh, the per, uh, sort of scraping the personally identifiable information or even health care information. Um, if somebody has gotten hold of verified credentials from the first phase, right? I have these 500 accounts, let me just scrape out all the information and I can resell it or reuse it uh, in the black market. So that's another one way to, to scrape data out um, uh, using bots. Another kind is uh, shopping bots. So uh, an example of this is sometimes there are let's say, limited edition shoes that come out, or lim there are tickets to a specific shows that come out. Uh, these bots, what they do is they buy out the inventory and then resell them in the secondary market at a much higher price sometimes. So that's, that's annoying, and most of the, your customers are not able to access the inventory that you, you are planning to sell to them. So that's another place where the bots, uh, uh, sort of, um, the bad bots misuse, uh, misuse the traffic. The last kind is more generic, is more of an API abuse problem. If, you have, if your website has APIs that are exposed uh, uh, for your customers, sometimes your mobile app to access the data, or, or sometimes without authentication as well. But these APIs can be misused by your competitors or sometimes even uh, bad guys uh, in terms of scraping pricing information or inventory information. Or there are various different use cases, uh, location information of your customers and so on and so forth. So API abuse is another one uh, that, uh, uh, that, that we've seen in the, in the black market being abused. Now, how do people do this? Um, and obviously, you can write your own programs to, to do that using Java, Perl, Python, a bunch of programming languages. But what has happened in the last four or five years, there are a bunch of black market tools that have come out. Um, the, the picture shows here is a tool called Sentry MBA, very widely used. And it's a platform in itself, actually. What it does is you can, you can get hold of this application somewhere from the black market, ask somebody to build a profile or a custom configuration for any given site, right? And in the black market, it actually sells for maybe $5 to $500 that I want uh, um, configuration for this. Get that configuration. And you specify the intent that I want account verification uh, to be done on this. I will give the credential in this case. Right? Uh, the next thing they do is they get hold of credentials from breaches. I mean, you can go to pastebin.com or other places where you can just buy those credentials. Uh, load up a bunch of uh, proxy servers, because you don't want to be identified as an attacker that I'm coming from this particular IP address. So I load up openly available proxy servers and just fire it away on the site. Right? You can actually be very low and slow. You, it doesn't necessarily hit the thresholds that you have set for the IP addresses and come back hours later and out of the, the 5 million or 10, 10 million accounts, I have these 5,000, 10,000 verified accounts that I can now uh, take it to the next level, maybe resell it in the black market or try to do actual fraud on top of it. So there are a bunch of tools. This is Sentry, but there are probably 10, 15 different tools available for, for this kind of activity in the black market. So these are the bad, bad bots uh, that we typically see on, on, on our sites. The, the third kind is somewhat in the gray area and really depends on their intent. And these are things like unauthorized scanners. Like you see scanners come in, uh, like, OK, are there any uh, vulnerable PHPs hosted on your site, or is, is there any admin interfaces available on your site? You're not authorized that, but these guys are constantly scanning and trying to figure out is there anything in there. And this is more of a precursor to the actual attack um, that they, they want to run. Um, another one is sometimes these aggregators can be annoying. Uh, and the reason I say that, that is, uh, we've seen sites where close to 30% or, or more of their traffic is actually aggregated traffic, uh, coming at times during peak hours, right? I mean, where you, most of your customers are logging in and surfing uh, and, and trying to do transactions and, and buy stuff, right? Now, in that case, you actually have to over-provision your hardware, right? 
uh, versus if they were to have come in in the night or a weekend when your site is not that busy, it's probably okay. I mean, you don't want to block them, but want them to come at odd hours. Sometimes you want them to come through specific APIs that you have exposed for them. You don't want them to scrape the traffic from your web portal, right? So you want visibility and control, and these are, that's why I put them in the unwanted category as well. Now, in terms of the impact, I mean, you can already see from the bad bots, uh, the fraud is the biggest impact, uh, especially for account takeover uh, kind of activity, where once these guys have access to the credentials that work on your site, they can, they can uh, and get access to your customers' data, maybe even credit card information, uh, home information address, and all those things, right? Uh, but apart from that, if once you realize um, you, that these accounts have been breached, you have to notify your customers, it's loss of, loss of reputation as, as the site owner. Right? That's pretty bad as well. Uh, now, what we've also seen is typically when bot traffic hits your site, um, most of the times the web servers can scale up very easily. Right? What does not scale up the, that quickly is the backend database servers. It's, it's harder to scale that. And because these bots are actually hitting your backend servers ultimately by doing account verification or doing account creation, those servers tend to run hard and can potentially lead to site being unavailable. So it's it's bad experience as well. Now, the next thing that we run into is how it affects the user experience, right? Uh, now, given that this traffic is coming to your site, you tend to take precautions. Maybe I'll throw a captcha, do second level verification. It's, it's more of a bad user experience for, for them because now they have to get access to the phone, uh, and some, uh, as an SMS, or it might have come in their email, whatever that is, and they might decide, well, let me do this later on, this transaction. It's not that important right now. And that's why it can also lead to loss of business uh, in some certain cases, because uh, uh, that additional use, uh, sort of uh, bump that we've added in the transaction leads them to, to go away. So these are the different kinds of impact. I'm sure you've run into other, other um, sort of problems associated with bots as well, but these, these are the cases that we typically uh, run into. So like, because we have different kinds of bots, which could be good, you want to allow them, blocking all bots is definitely not an option. So you have to actually be able to identify what their intent is, and only then decide to take actions on top of them. Now, how do we deal with it, right? I mean, how do we figure out the intent? Uh, I mean, an option is let's take a look at the server logs, figure out what's going on. But the server logs do not have enough context in them, right? I mean, you can have the user agent strings, you can have some IP addresses, maybe timing information, but not enough to identify the intent of these bots, because again, it's not just about the bot, but is it really good or not? Is it an aggregate or not? That's what more, what's more important in all these cases. So the next, next option is, can I, can I blacklist uh, certain aspects of what, we, what I'm seeing in the logs or what I have available from subscription services? Maybe I've signed up for uh, blacklist IP services and so on. But we all know, I mean, IPs are disposable, uh, and uh, what, the moment you block something, block an IP address, attackers quickly realize that. They just simply move on to a different set of IP addresses. So it becomes more of a whack-a-mole game in, the, in that case. Um, the other option is maybe blacklist organizations. But uh, again, what we see is a lot of traffic comes from cloud services these days, even bad ones. So we can't end up blacklisting these organizations. And sometimes uh, this traffic actually comes from compromised users in consumer ISP, from consumer ISPs. So we can't be blacklisting those, those, those organizations. And again, blacklisting, 
use the raging strings, it works sometimes, but I mean, attackers now are using legitimate uh, user agent strings in that case to actually hide themselves from, uh, uh, from, from human eyes. So the next option is, can I do something in my WAF? Um, but uh, from, from a WAF perspective, everything is syntactically OK. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the request. It's the intent that is actually wrong. Um, so it's very hard to find the patterns that you can actually signature on. Uh, the other option is, can I rate limit using my, my WAF? Because maybe I'll say, maybe allow five requests or one request a minute. But in this case, we see attacks from thousands and hundreds of thousands of IP address, addresses. And even if you allow one request per minute from an IP address, you're still allowing 100,000 requests into your environment. And if you, if you actually start blocking, in this case, you are tipping off the attacker. They realize it, then they move on to a different IP address. So that also does not work. So from our perspective, what we saw was this is more of an intent. And identifying the intent first is the most important thing. Simple signatures do not work at all. Uh, as the transactions come in, the way to deal with this is try to figure out their behavior. What is this particular session, this particular transaction trying to do? Do it across transaction sessions, sort of build out, figure out uh, the behavior, what it's trying to do. And try to classify it into an intent. OK, this is an account verification activity. This is a normal user trying to do just buy something on your website. Uh, this is a fake account creation run. So try to sort of identify uh, or classify the intent based on sort of machine learning and different behavior analysis. And once you have that intent identified, you can take actions, right? But blocking is not necessarily a good option in that case. Um, so based on different intents, you can take different kinds of actions. You can say, OK, an aggregator is coming in at an odd hours. Uh, let me rate limit it. Or if there is an account takeover activity happening where somebody's trying out hundreds and thousands of accounts on my site. Let me send them fake responses. Like, let the tool think it's going, uh, the, the attack is actually going on. He's, he doesn't get tipped off. He'll continue to go through the run. So you can take different policy-based actions once the intent is actually identified. So this, this is what we've tried, tried to do at Stealth Security, focused on identifying bots and their intent. And with Nginx, uh, I mean, we, we've tried to uh, come up with an Nginx module that is extremely easy to deploy. It protects all your, web cha your channels, be it web, mobile, or API. Uh, and it's certified by Nginx so that you can actually trust it. There's no JavaScript or SDK integration needed uh, uh, because once, once we get into that mode, then you have to keep up with constantly testing it with your application or rolling out with every mobile API, a mobile app update that you are. So we've stayed out of that approach for integration. And it does not affect your Nginx um, uh, at all, because most of the heavy analysis, the way we've architected this, happens outside the Nginx. So from that perspective, uh, it's extremely lightweight. So that's um, sort of uh, uh, the, the high-level architecture here. There are a lot of details in here. Uh, maybe we can talk about it offline. Um, we have a booth down here. Um, so thank you. Um, again, uh, if you have questions, I'll be available to uh, answer them.